Good afternoon, everyone. Country Flyboy here, and uh, today I'm recording the last video and playing it first. No, well, yes, but this is the first video in a new series, and this is somewhat similar to my uh, airport design editor series, but this time I'm going to show you and talk about developing, not really developing, but editing aircraft CFG files. There is a lot of misinformation out there and a lot of stuff that I think people don't really know how to do, but hopefully by the end of this series you'll understand a little bit more about what makes aircraft work in ESP-based sims. And seeing as though Dovetail just released the SDK for Flight Sim World, I thought this would be a good time to do that. Now, thing here, um, I was actually making this as far back as November when I started work on this. Uh, it's currently January. The it, it It's just after midnight on the third day of January 2018 making this first video. After I have uploaded all the other videos, um, some uh, after Dovetail released the SDK, I thought it was worth making a dedicated video to that one. So that's going to be the last video in this series. This first one I'm making because um, as I rewatched some of it, I noticed there were some things I neglected to mention that I probably should mention. That and um, I, I wanted to uh, say a few things because I'm releasing this series differently than I normally do. Normally I re record all the videos, edit them, upload them, release them one at, one at a time over a week. But this time I'm releasing all videos all at once. And the reason for that is Dovetail has made me do it, sort of, by releasing the SDK. I thought it would be really silly now the SDK is out to release all these at once. So I'm going to release all of them at once instead of releasing them over the course of several weeks like I normally do. Uh, that's why I'm releasing them all at once. Now this series is not going to be about developing aircraft, but uh, the CFG file is probably one of the most important parts of the aircraft design in ESP-based sims because the CFG file controls so much about the plane, it's unreal. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about this in video one, if you consider this video zero, but there is so much more, there, there's so much important info in the CFG file. It's vitally important if you're making an airplane that you know what goes where. And most of it's not really that hard. Um, it, it's really not. It, it's a lot of straightforward information that if you know anything about aircraft, you should be able to fill in the blanks pretty quickly. So that's that. Um, if you have any questions, the SDK, uh, I'm the SDK that came with Flight Sim X, you may not have this. <laughs> Because it seems that a lot of people don't, but it details literally everything and is, as far as I'm concerned, required reading for anyone making any kind of mod for Flight Sim. However, you might not have it, so I'm going to recommend three online alternatives. Now, firstly, concerning FSX, if you can't get the actual SDK, here's the Microsoft ESP SDK. Links to these will be in the description, by the way. Uh, and this is almost a word-for-word -word copy. This is basically the same. For those of you who don't know, ESP was the commercial version of FSX. This is what got sold to actual simulator developers like Redbird. This was what uh, Lockheed bought that eventually became P3D. The ESP, sim, the ESP SDK, almost exactly the same as FSX. There's not too much different, but it's online and it's almost word for word the same so you can consider this a good online alternative since the FSX SDK was never made available online however uh, if you're making Flight Sim World definitely use Dovetail's SDK and this is almost word for word the same as FSX's too um, they did make several notable changes though so while not too much is different there are enough things different in here that you do need to read it and be aware of the differences. And same with the P3D SDK. Right, the P3D SDK um, has some differences in it that is unique to P3D. Same with Flight Sim World. So this, all three of them are good enough, I'd say. You could probably feel your way through it if you want to make FSX add-ons. But use the appropriate one for, uh, for the sim you're making stuff for. And uh, one other thing I want to mention is 
the SDK doesn't actually go over how things work in the sim. Uh, for example, with the fuel system, it tells you how to add new fuel tanks and what information is required, but it doesn't tell you the fuel ordering, like does left aux feed left main and then left main feeds the engine or what's going on there. Uh, it's kind of weird how that works. Uh, unfortunately, we're kind of stuck with that in ESP-based sims. It doesn't look like that's going to be changing either in P3D or Flight Sim World anytime soon. Call me if you want uh, some tips, by the way, Dovetail and Lockheed. But it it's like that with a lot of systems. The SDK tells us how to add them, but not really, really how they work in the sim. However, after numerous tests, I've determined that they seem to follow the the real world systems pretty closely, particularly the way they're detailed in this book. This is the pilot's handbook of aeronautical knowledge. This is one of the advisor. Is this an advisory circular? Not really. This is one of the books that you can get from the FAA for free online, or you can buy the print version that you will, if you're doing any flight training in the U S and maybe even outside the U S you would want to read this book. Uh, this is, and I would, rec I, I would recommend flight simmers read this book too. This is one of the best books you can read. It, it really is because it goes over everything. We got introductory to flying, aeronautical decision making, aircraft construction, principles of flight, aerodynamics, flight controls, aircraft systems, which is the port. That's the part you want to pay the most most amount of attention to when making flight sim aircraft. So this is. Chapter 7 is going to be the one you want to read. It seems that flight sim built-in systems seem to follow the uh, aeronautical knowledge handbook pretty closely. An example would be pressurization. Pressurization is a system that's supported by default. Um, you can specify two par parameters for pressurization in the uh, aircraft CFG file. And then using key commands or gauges in the sim, you can specify cabin altitude. So that's how that works. But definitely give this a read. Here's chapter 7. talks about everything from how engines work to propeller design, what different gauges do, all sorts of stuff. Consider this required reading. Now, if you want to know how to get it, FAA.gov. I'll link to it directly in the description if I can, but... Just to show you, FAA.gov, you want to go to Regulations and Policies, and then click Handbooks and Manuals, Aviation, not Aircraft, Aviation, and it's right down here. Uh, let's see, Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. You can see when it was published, <coughs> and the last time any significant change was made to it. So you can see the one here is the most recent one, and that is this one right here. Highly, highly recommend reading this book, even if you're not interested in making airplanes, if you just want to improve your flying in flight sim, this is the place to start right here, this book. It's actually a really good read. It's got nice pretty pictures and everything. Look, it even tells you how turbochargers work. Now, I want to make a caveat. Um, there's two ways to make an airplane for flight sim, and most add-on devs, the payware ones anyway, choose to use the other method, which is a lot of external coding. I'm not the biggest fan of external coding because it every dev has their own way of doing it, and it basically means that nothing is standardized and everything's all over the place. I recommend using, especially for freeware devs, using built-in systems where possible and accenting it with custom coded stuff if you need to. And you can actually make a very, very good convincing airplane by that way. That's what I recommend doing. Now, custom coded stuff is a little bit different. Believe it or not, most payware add-ons still use the default weight and balance system. Uh, with the CS757 just came out, there's a, lot, there's a big to-do about that right now. But most payware add-ons, including PMDG, still use that system because there's really nothing wrong with it. The big problem is the loader. When you put in, when you use the FMS and the NGX from PMDG, uh, you're basically specifying passengers and cargo load. The FMS is really just doing the math for you to decide how much weight to put in each individual station so you don't have to use the, the loader uh, or the built-in loader. 
that's really what's occurring there. That's how almost all of them work. A2A might be a bit different. I have to look into them. I think they're pretty much the same though. So be aware, payware add-ons tend to use custom coding, uh, most notably with sound. There is freeware um, sound DLLs available, but um, you can't assign sounds to individual switches on planes and ESP-based uh, sims. So there's usually a, a custom code DLL that's running in the background that is handling the sounds for individual switches. You can kind of hack it with some of them using uh, looping wave files if you know how to set them up properly. Uh, for example, the fuel pump switch on default planes, uh, let's, it's about a second long. If you divide that second into thirds, the first third actually includes a switch on sound. The last third includes a switch off sound. And in the middle is the um, continuous running of the fuel pump. And when you turn it on in the sim, it will actually loop just that middle third. It'll play the first part, loop the middle third, and then only play the last third when you turn the switch off. That is completely doable with default stuff. But again, it's a bit more complex beyond the scope of what I'm talking about in CFG files. But just know that custom coding can throw a bit of a monkey wrench into the stuff. Now, I'm releasing all these videos at once, so real quick I want to go over what's in each video. So this is video zero. Uh, video one is going to be a bit of a redress of some of this stuff. I tried not to repeat myself too much in this one. Video one might be a bit of regurgitated content for you. Video one is basically me talking about the tools. So what the heck is this thing? The tools that you'll need and basic information about aircraft CFG files. Just the bare bone basics that you'll need to know throughout editing the entire thing. Video two, discuss the easy to edit information. Things like um, scalers and just reference data that really doesn't do much in the sim but is there if you need it. <coughs> but we can also talk about weight and balance in that section. So I highly, highly recommend you watch that one. Weight and balance is a very big deal. Uh, and it's also one of the places that most developers mess up quite a bit. Video three, we discuss engines and propellers. Video four is all about the electrical system. Video five is the aircraft systems, which is actually quite numerous. Uh, we talk about... Uh, vacuum systems, pressurization systems, uh, hydraulic, quite a bit of uh, systems in that one. So that one's important to watch too. Uh, video six is the fuel system and flight instruments. Fuel system is the most important part. Flight instruments is a pretty straightforward part, but again, that's also an area where developers tend to mess up quite a bit, so give it a watch. Video eight is all about visuals which is the lighting system, the visual effects, and we also talk about exits there. Uh, contact points, which is related mostly to landing gear, but plays into the effects system as well. And then the warning systems. These are things like ground proximity warning system and um, bingo fuel and over G advisories, as well as uh, a few other things. Warning systems at the end of video eight. Video 9, we talk a little bit about helicopters and some about the um, texture folders. Believe it or not, that has some significance. And lastly, video 10, we discuss some things about Flight Sim World in particular because Flight Sim World's actually made more changes to the aircraft CFG file that is noticeable than P3D has. P3D hasn't really touched the CFG files too much. Flight Sim World made enough changes to the aircraft CFG files that I think it warrants talking about them in this series. We don't go over every change that they made, but we go over the ones that probably need the most explaining. Because uh, several of the changes they made were pretty straightforward and obvious, but they did make some that needed some explaining. So if you're wondering about Flight Sim World specific stuff there, particularly with the new weight and balance thing that they put in, as well as AccuFeel, that's the place to look. All right, so that's all that. Uh, links, well, hopefully if I have enough room, YouTube's been a bit of a bitch with the uh, description links lately, but if I have enough room, I'll try to timestamp every single part down in the description so you can consider this the master video. Anyway, the playlist has been made, all the videos are uploaded, so hope you enjoy it, hope you learned something, and I will see you guys next time. Take care, everyone.